Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do my end of year um, manga haul for 2021. So this is all the stuff I picked up in November and December. I think I only got like two volumes in December, uh, which were pre-orders, and everything else was from November. So I'm um, just going to start off with the continuations. I got volume 7 of A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow. This volume was a lot better than the previous volume. Um, the previous volume was very depressing and just super, like, just sad. Because um, it was very, like, focused on the loneliness and um, the conflict um, between the characters. Whereas this one sort of started to revolve, resolve some things and um, had a little bit more of an uplifting tone to it, which was nice. So I enjoyed this volume. Then I got, I have not read these yet, um, because it's getting to the end of the series and I figured I might as well just get, I think volume 12 is the last one, um, but I've got volumes 8 through 11 of Love Me, Love Me Not. I was really behind on picking these up. I really, really love this series by Ayo Saki Saka. Um, I just was behind because there haven't really been any sales or anything this year, um, or last year, I guess, um, on manga, so... Yeah, I just hadn't picked any up, and when a sale happened, I grabbed a bunch. So, I do really love this series. Um, and I'm super stoked to catch up on it. I just figured I might as well read other things while I wait for um, being able to pick up the last volume. Or last couple, if there's actually 13, I don't remember. Then I got volume 3 of Even Though We're Adults by Takako Shimura. This is the uh, story about these two women. One is a uh, elementary school teacher and the other um, is, I believe, a hairdresser. It's really good. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, this one does involve some cheating because one of the women is married, but I think it's being dealt with really well. And I think that it's um, a good conversation about kind of finding yourself especially after you've kind of settled down and you think that you found your person and now all of a sudden this other human exists that you're, you can't get out of your mind. And uh, I really, really like the artwork in it. And <clears throat> I always enjoy Takako Shimura stories. So not surprising that I enjoy that one as well. Got Gigant, Volume 6 by Hiroya Oku. I can't read this because I need Volume 5. And I ordered Volume 5 and then it canceled because it was out of stock. So um, yeah. So I can't read this yet, but it is a very beautiful uh, cover, and I do really enjoy this one. Um, it's Hiroya Oku ridiculousness, so it's always fun. Then I got the third omnibus, 5 and 6, of Blue Giant by Shinichi Ishizuka. I haven't read this one yet. I actually have only read the first omnibus. I have um, the 3 and 4 and now 5 and 6, but I just haven't read any more of it yet. I need to be in the mood to read it, and I'm not going to force myself to read it. This one is about a young man, high school student, uh, who wants to be the best jazz musician in the world. And so he's practicing his uh, saxophone, and yeah. I really enjoyed the first omnibus. I really, really like the artwork. There's a lot of color pages and, and whatnot as well, so... I'm excited to read it, I just haven't got around to it. Then I got volumes 6, 7, and 8 of Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. Um, I own the first five volumes digitally. Um, I got them in a humble bundle and I really, really loved it. I do like these teasing um, manga. Uh, this one has a bit more of a meaner edge to it. Um, it does kind of go, in my opinion, toes the line, goes over the line a little bit into bullying rather than just teasing, um, especially on the part of like her friends uh, with the with the male main character, but um, I do really, really like it. I think that despite the mean edge that Nagatoro is a very adorable character, and I really like the male main character as well. Um, I think that he's just... He's just this artsy, kind of dorky kid, and I think their dynamic is really cute and fun. So I believe I've read six up to volume seven. I don't think I read volume eight yet, 
but uh, yeah, I am planning to pick up one through five physically. I just haven't gotten around to it. And when the sale happened, I wanted to read more of the series that I hadn't already read. So I picked up um, from from where I left off digitally. But yeah, also these color, uh, the spines with the colors is so cool. Um, they look really, really pretty together. So that's always nice. Then the long awaited Classmates Volume 4. Uh, this is by Asumiko Nakamura, is uh, Sora and Hara. This follows the teacher from the main original story, three volume story. Um, and we do see our main characters from the, the previous stories just barely in this one. Uh, but this follows the teacher as, and a new student at the school. So if you do not like age gap stuff, um, just be aware of that going into this, but I thought it was dealt with very well. I thought it was really, really good. I thought it was a bit redeeming actually to this teacher because I don't have a problem with age gap stuff. It doesn't bother me, but um, the teacher in Classmates is just such a creep. Like I didn't like him at all, but then in this volume you get to see from his perspective and you get to see, you know, what his life is like and what his past is like and all this stuff and I was actually like okay I kind of actually like this guy um because viewing him through the main characters of the original series kind of lends he's just a he's just a creepy dude that I'm like what are you doing man but from here you're like oh, okay I see you know the human side to you and I see you know some redeeming qualities in your in your character um I guess or just entertaining enough qualities, I should say. Uh, but yeah, the art is amazing as always with Asumiko Nakamura, and this is a very thick volume, which I enjoy. We are getting another uh, volume um, soon. I don't think it's out yet, um, but it's coming soon and I'm very excited. Speaking of age gaps, we got My Boy, Volume 8, um, by Hitomi Takano. This is beautiful cover. I love the covers of this one. The color of like his hair is so cool. But anyway, uh, this one, it is safe to say at this point, eight volumes in, that the story that started out as potentially just a relationship between, you know, a young 12-year-old like a platonic kind of mentor relationship between a 12 year old in, from a troubled home and this woman in her late 20s potentially early 30s i think i think she's in her 20s but anyway um has has blossomed into getting into uncomfortable territory for for many people and so at this point safe to say that if you are not okay with age gap stuff stay away from this one um yeah but i do continue to enjoy this story i find it to be a very relaxing story i love the artwork um and i want to know what happens i want to know what happens to these two because separately i really love both of these main characters i do like the side characters as well and i'm just I just want to know what happens and I'm along for the ride at this point. I'm eight volumes in, I'm not jumping off the train now. So that's that. And then we've got volume seven of Blood on the Tracks continues to be very unsettling. Um, this one, this volume took a very, very, very dark turn, even darker than the previous volumes. Um, and we are seeing in this volume in particular the very, very, very um, scary effect that the mother's mental illness has had on her son. Um, yeah, quite a, quite a sad volume. Then we've got Sweat and Soap, volume six by Kintetsu Yamada great volume. I'm behind on this one. I know I'm way behind on this one. Uh, I enjoy every volume that that I read of this. I just, I've fallen behind. Um, but this was a very good one. Um, focused on like, you know, trying to start a life together and very, very cute. The art is still good. The 
you know, romance and, and whatnot and trying to, you know, navigate being in the same space when you're used to having your own space. It's just a very real adult conversation to have and, and I think it's done really well. Then I got volume 11 of Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. I believe volume 12 is the final volume. So excited that this one's coming to an end now. I, I enjoyed my time with it. I really liked the beginning of the series better than um, particularly the middle, but I, I did quite enjoy this volume. Um, the art is very good. Like the, the, the men in this series are just gorgeous. Uh, they're idols, so I guess that makes sense. But uh, yeah, this series deals well with like, again, this is an age gap. Uh, he's in his mid twenties and mid early to mid twenties and she's in high school still. Um, but this deals a lot with fame and how you know, somebody is balancing their career with a love life and she's trying to deal with being in a relationship, in a secret relationship with this this guy who's very popular. And um, yeah, it's an interesting kind of conversation about maturity because he's he's older, but he's not necessarily more mature than her. And she's trying to be very mature when she's just doesn't have the life experience yet. Um, to navigate a situation with this kind of depth, I guess. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I, I do really like his manager. Uh, I believe it's his manager. Uh, I think he's a funny guy. Speaking of age gaps, geez, this month has so many age gaps. Um, Living Room Matsunaga-san, Volume 6. I love this series. Uh, this is a boarding house story, which I love boarding house stories. Uh, again, this one, all of the characters are gorgeous. I love all their fashion. I love all of the character designs. I just, this volume in particular dealt with kind of like, we've introduced a bit of a rival, a potential rival older guy, um, which I love both of them dearly. I love Matsunaga and I love the other guy. Uh, so to me, I'm like, love them all. Love them all. Be with all of them. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I love the dynamic of this one. Again, this is a young high, or, you know, young woman, high school girl in a house with adults um, and trying to kind of grow up a bit because she's living in a space where she doesn't have parents and she's living with these other, you know, they're college students or working adults and they're all trying to navigate life while living in the same space as this high school kid. So, um, but yeah, she's, you know, making friendships and this one's about people moving on and, you know, this boarding house situation isn't going to last forever. Uh, this, this volume deals with one of the, um, roommates moving out and everybody's kind of dealing with their own feelings about that. And, you know, just because someone's leaving doesn't mean it's the end of a relationship, but it does feel like the end of an era. Um, so, so trying to navigate those feelings is, you know, tough, especially for someone so young, but also you see that the others are struggling with it too. I thought this was a really, really good volume. As always, I love this series, uh, and I can't wait to read more of it. Then I got more of Levius EST. This is by Haruhisu Nakata. Sorry, Haruhisa Nakata. I got volumes four, six, and seven. I already had volume five, so I got that a long time ago. Um, I'm, as you can see, reading volume four. I really, really love Levius. I think that the artwork is super cool. Um, this one deals with like mechanical martial arts. So it's like MMA, but with people who've modified their bodies mechanically. Uh, there's an overarching kind of political sort of situation happening. Um, I just think this one is so exciting. And I love the artwork and I love the vibe of it and the atmosphere. Um, it's a fun one, but I haven't really read these volumes yet. So, uh, yeah. Then volume 10 of Love at 14. This is like a sleeper hit for me. 
Um, we only get one volume a year, pretty much, of this series, but every time a volume comes in, I read it immediately, and I just love it. I find it to be so entertaining. It's really slow paced, but it's just like cute. Uh, again, if you are uncomfortable with age gaps involving teachers and students or just older people, adults and young people, avoid it. Uh, a lot of the side couples uh, deal with age gap situations, um, all of which are women. All of the older people are women, if I remember correctly. There are no male older figures with young girls. It's all the opposite. So, uh, yeah, but we have our two main characters who are 14, um, and they're kind of like seen as these mature people in class, and nobody knows that they're dating, but secretly they're not as mature as they like the air that they put on at school. Um, and uh, yeah, and then there's a million one side kind of couples that I really enjoy. Uh, these two are growing on me. For most of the series, I do not care for these two. It's all the side couples that I'm interested in seeing and the side characters I just think are so charming. But uh, these two are growing on me now that we're getting some substance to their story. Uh, it's a lot more fun. Uh, he is my favorite character. <laughs> He's so funny. But yeah, the covers are always gorgeous on these as well. And we got volume 10 of Inu Asano's Dead Dead Demons, D -d 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 Destruction. I haven't read this volume yet, which is a crime, because I usually read these as soon as they come in. I just haven't read it yet. Um, but I think it's, it's, I think it's getting close to the end of the series. So, uh, yeah, this is a great one, kind of in an apocalyptic world where aliens are hovering over Tokyo and shit kind of hit the fan a couple volumes ago. So this is going to continue that situation. But yeah, I am excited to read this. I just kind of like a part of me I feel like is trying to wait for another volume so I can read like two in one go. But, you know. And then I got volumes three and four. Our omnibus three and four of Maizani Koku by Rumiko Takahashi and these beautiful... Um, like perfect edition things. I don't know what they're or collector's editions. I don't know what Viz is calling these, but anyway, uh, gorgeous covers, really gorgeous series. I have not read these two volumes yet either. Again, I have to be in the mood. Um, these are kind of like rom-com slice of life about a apartment built boarding house situation. Um, the new young hot manager of the of the house uh, and the young college student um, or trying to be college student. I don't even know if he's in college or he can't even get accepted to college. He's a young guy anyway. He's in his early 20s who has a crush on her and just kind of the situational comedy with the other residents and all that. Um, I really enjoyed the first two omnibuses and I will continue. I'm going to buy the whole series. This is one I've been very interested in for many, many years. Of course, it was out of print forever, but uh, yeah, I just haven't gotten around to reading them because I've been very tired recently and reading has been making me even more tired because I start to sit down and try to relax and then I just fall asleep. So something that's very slow paced is going to make me fall asleep even faster. So I'm just trying to strike a balance here. And now on to the continued, continued and completed series. Ajin, Demi Human, Volume 17. Gamon Sakurai, amazing series. I do have my final series review up already on my channel that you can watch. Uh, but yeah, super great. I love the plain volume uh, because all the other volumes are really, really, you know, colorful and dynamic looking. And I really, really enjoy that series. Finally, completed all 30 volumes of Kimi ni Taroke by Karuho Shina. This is volume nine. It was the only volume I was missing. I've ordered this so many times and it kept going uh, canceling because it was out of stock every time I ordered it. And I finally got it. So my goal 
for 2022 is to reread Kimi ni Chiroke and do a full, like, in-depth review. Um, because I have read the entire series. I read it from my library for many, 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 many years. I was getting, borrowing the volumes as they were coming out. And this is one that I really, really love. Uh, and I finally own the whole series so I can just read it all through on my own terms. And yeah, really fun high school romance that clearly was very popular because it lasted 30 volumes. I really like the side characters. I think the friend group is amazing and I just love the dynamic of this one and I'm very excited to reread it. Like I said, goal for this year to reread the entire thing uh, and do a good review of it. And again, Shortcake Cake, Volume 12, Sue Morishida, Boarding House Romance Coming to an End. Um, I have a series review of this one. I think it's up already, but maybe it's not up yet. I filmed it for sure, and if it's not already up, then it's scheduled to come out soon. Um, but yeah, another end to a pretty decent uh, shoujo series that I quite enjoyed. Girl from the Other Side, Volume 11. Uh, there will be a extra stories volume, a side stories volume or whatever uh, coming out, but this is the end of the full main story. So yeah, again, uh, I don't know if it's up yet, but I've definitely filmed a review of this series already, and it should be out soon if it's not already. But uh, yeah, up and down for this one for me. I really, really love the beginning chunk and then from the middle it kind of lost me for a bit the end was was decent the last couple of volumes kind of picked up again but um yeah really really beautiful artwork at least throughout the entire thing and then i finally finished finally got my hands on the last two omnibuses of naoki urasawa's uh, 20th century boys and then 21st century boys uh this volume again ordered it so many times it kept getting cancelled. So it was very frustrating to not be able to read it because this is a story that I was reading as the volumes were coming out and then I had to wait a super long time to get my hands on this one. Uh, but yeah, finished it. I don't think I've filmed a review for this one yet. But it will be out soon because I will be filming it soon if I am correct in thinking I haven't filmed it yet. Uh, but my brain is kind of mush. <laughs> Everything's been so chaotic um, that, you know, manga's kind of fallen to the wayside, unfortunately. But yeah, the I really, really enjoyed this. I think it was really amazing um, throughout the whole thing. And I'm excited in the future. I'm not going to do it anytime soon, but I'm excited in the future to reread the whole series, like, just through. Because, like I said, I was reading these as they were coming out. And so I was reading the volume to volume. Um, which, for Naoki Urasawa stories, makes you forget a lot of things uh, because it's such an intricate kind of story that jumps around timelines and jumps around characters and all of that kind of stuff. But I still really, really enjoyed it uh, the way that I read it, so I'm sure I will enjoy it even more on a reread when I can actually read the whole thing through. And I got the second Fat Cat collection of What's Michael by Makoto Kobayashi. Uh, this is a Dark Horse release of the... They've released What's Michael in many, many different um, publications, but this is basically short stories about cats, particularly Michael, but it also focuses on a bunch of other cats too. And it's just short, ridiculous, comedic stories about cats. Um, and they're quite good. I, I read the first Fat Cat collection. Um, I haven't read this one yet, but I knew I needed to pick it up because Dark Horse stuff goes out of print pretty quickly, and I didn't want to miss out. So this is a really, really classic series, and super happy that they reprinted it and that I get to enjoy it. But yeah, the first one was hilarious, so excited to have the second one in my collection. Next up are some new to me and single volume complete series. So we got Censor by Junji Ito. I have a review of this one already. Um, can't remember if it's out, but again, if it's not out already, it's scheduled to come out very soon. This was very good. This was a single like, compiled story rather than a short story collection. Beautiful release uh, and really, really, really fun story about this like golden hair 
and this kind of cult. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. And then I got another, I believe this is a short story collection uh, by Junji Ito, Love Sickness. This one I haven't read yet. Um, just haven't gotten around to it. But I really enjoy Junji Ito's short stories, so I am sure that I will enjoy this one. Then I got Haru's Curse by Asuka Konishi. This is a single, complete, kind of omnibus volume by Vertical. I haven't read this yet. Um, I love the artwork. Super intrigued by this. I've just been... Like, I want to give full attention to it when I read it. And I, again, like I said, scatterbrained. Uh, I don't want to just rush through it. I found myself, like, really kind of rushing through reading lately um, instead of actually fully appreciating what it is I'm 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 trying to consume. And so I just want to be able to give my full attention to this and not have my mind wandering or trying to rush through it so I can get to another task. Um, so I've, I've been purposely putting off reading this because I'm really excited to, and I hope um, that it lives up to some of my expectations. But anyway. Then I got Boy Meets Maria. This is by Peo. Uh, this is a complete all-in-one story. I do have a review on my channel of this one that I think is coming out soon, um, if it isn't out already. I have a lot of feelings about this. Uh, this one deals with gender and, you know, sexual orientation and whatnot. Uh, there was a lot in here that I was not expecting that kind of um, surprised me. And yeah, but check out my review when that comes out to find out more of my thoughts on this. And then I got... Ugh. Wes Anderson's Isle of Dongs uh, by Mochizuki Minetaro. This is a manga adaption of the film, which I have not seen, but I was very intrigued by the artwork, and this is something that had been on my list of things that I was very interested in buying, but it's very expensive for such a skinny, you know, book, but it's got like photo finish kind of glossy paper, and it's a nice hardcover. Um, but yeah, I also have a review of this one coming out soon, I think, so check that out. But I definitely don't regret buying this. I got it on sale, um, and I'm happy to have it. And now brand new to me series that I'm starting, Those Not-So-Sweet Boys by Yoko Nogiri. This is a new Kodansha release. I haven't read this yet. It has a lot of text. Um or at least it looked like it had a lot of text every time I go to read it, uh, or go to consider reading it. Uh, I wanted to finish some of the other shoujo stuff that I had on my list, rather than starting a brand new series uh, at the moment, but I know that I'm going to enjoy this. I liked Yoko Nogiri's other work. Um, uh, what was it? The one about photography. Focus? Love and Focus? Yep, that's it. So I'm excited to read this this, I think, will fill in the gap that, like, Waiting for Spring has left since that finished, so I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, I can get into that soon. Then I got Teasing Master Takagi-san Volume 1 by Shoichiro Yamamoto. This is amazing. It's incredible. It's another teasing one, but this one is much more lighthearted and sweet and cute and funny and adorable. Again, these volumes keep going in and out of stock, uh, so this one was quite difficult to get. I've wanted it for a very long time. Um, but yeah, I think there's like 12 volumes of this out now. All the covers are gorgeous. This is the only one I have so far, but I will collect more of this because it's just so adorable. This is one of my favorite romantic comedies to come out recently, um, and I think it's so charming. I have a first impressions coming out soon of that one. A School Frozen in Time by Naoshi Arakawa and Mizuki Sujimura. Uh, this is a four-volume series. It's volume one. I have a first impressions coming out of this one. This is kind of a horror psychological series about a student who killed themselves, and now all of the... a bunch of students are trapped in the school, and the time is, like, frozen, and they can't remember who it was that killed themselves, and there's kind of a bunch of scary stuff happening. Uh, 
I did not enjoy this first volume as much as I thought I would, but again, you can check out my first impressions uh, of it to get more of my thoughts on that. Another one I haven't read yet, Blue Period, Volume 1 by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. I know I'm going to love it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, again, I was trying to, I'm really trying to finish other stuff before I like dive into new stuff. Uh, but I know that I'm going to enjoy it. And when it was on sale, I figured I'd just grab the first volume. And that way, when I'm ready to read it, I will have a chance to read it. I got volumes one and two of number five by Taiyo Matsumoto. I've read the first one. I have not read the second one yet. Um, this one is a bit, it's a more fantasy sort of setting rather than a lot of Taiyo Matsumoto's other like slice of life stuff. Um, I have a first impressions of this one. If it's not already out, it's coming out soon. But I love the covers or the release of this one. Just generally, Viz is doing a very good job um, with these. And yeah, I love Taiyo Matsumoto. So anything that is released by him, I will pick up. Then got volumes one and two of Asadora. Again, haven't read these yet, simply because, like I said, trying to finish other things. I also wanted to finish 20th Century Boys before I started reading another Urasawa work, and I'm very excited to have these. I, I love these covers. I think they're so, like, the color just pops, and I, I really, really enjoy um, these, the artwork and stuff of this, so I'm very excited to get all of them on your shelf because I think that's just going to look amazing. And I got the first and second volumes of Phantom Tales of the Night. Loved this. I have a first impressions coming out at some point soon of that, of this one. Um, this is great. This is a kind of fantas dark fantasy psychological horror Jose um, about this, this spirit, like spiritual kind of dude, um, yokai sort of situation. He runs an inn that um, he kind of lures humans to the inn and then it, as payment for staying the night they have to give him one of their secrets and it's one of those twisted like you made a wish and you're not gonna your wish isn't gonna turn out the way that you think it's going to because there's a dark twisted element to it and i just love it love it so much uh, so i'm very excited to get my hands on more of phantom tales of the night And finally, I picked up the first two of, of this edition of Fist of the North Star. Uh, really, really loved it. I've read both of these. I have never read or watched any of Fist of the North Star, but I know it's a classic, and I know that it's ridiculous, um, action-packed macho dude stuff and i just really like classic series i like to collect them i like to have this kind of like history manga history in my collection and this is just a fun it's just a fun action series i'm excited to get more of it these editions are beautiful i believe there's going to be 18 of these if i remember correctly so get your wallets ready folks um but these are nice nice editions really really fun series so yeah that is i think everything that i picked up in november december so that's it for 2021 uh, happy new year folks and uh look forward to seeing what i'm able to collect and get my hands on um for this year but yeah thanks for watching